Good morning, beloved children of God. How are you today? Well, today is Tuesday morning, and here in Washington, Iowa, it is a gorgeous day. I am Pastor Maureen Howard of Emanuel Lutheran Church in Washington, Iowa, and I welcome you to Storytime with Pastor Maureen. Well, this is a very special week in the life of Christians, followers of Jesus. This is what's called Holy Week. It's the most highest, holiest week in the entire year. It's even bigger than Christmas. Can you understand that? It's bigger than Christmas. So this is Holy Week, and we began on Sunday. Sorry about that. It, begins, it began on Sunday with Palm Sunday where Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey and everybody is excited and saying how Jesus is their king and they're waving branches, uh, palm branches, and laying them down on the road as he enters in. So the readings that we're doing today, uh, or the rest of this week, all take place in Holy Week, which means the readings that we've been doing all before this are in what's called the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible. Stories of God's love for his people, stories about God's people uh, before Jesus was born. And now we've moved into the New Testament and we're particularly focused on the stories that are happening this week during Holy Week when Jesus is born, of course, uh, and he's now uh, an adult, and he's 30 years old. Now, the stories that I'm going to read today, tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday, all would have happened to Jesus on Thursday night. So a lot took place in Jesus's life on Thursday night, which we call Monday Thursday. Can you say that word? That's an odd word. Monday. Say it with me. Monday, Monday, Thursday. And Monday is a word that means command. Jesus gives us a new command on that night, on Thursday night. And it means um, a new command, which Jesus tells us is to love one another, to love one another just as Jesus loves us. So remember, today, tomorrow, and Thursday are stories of Jesus's life on Thursday night. So let's begin. I'm again reading from the Jesus Storybook Bible, and it's written by Sally Lloyd-Jones, and it's illustrated by Iago. And the story today is called The Servant King, The Last Supper, from Mark 14 and John chapters 13 and 14. All right? Are you ready? Okay. It was Passover, the time when God's people remembered how God had rescued them from being slaves in Egypt. Every year, they killed a lamb and ate it. The lamb died instead of us, they would say. But this Passover, God was getting ready for an even greater rescue, rescue. Jesus and his friends were having the Passover meal together in an upstairs room. But Jesus' friends were arguing. What about? They were arguing about stinky feet. Stinky feet? Yes, that's right. Stinky feet. Now, the thing about feet back when then was that people didn't wear shoes. They only wore sandals, which might not sound unusual, except that the streets in those days were dirty. And I don't mean just dusty dirty. I mean really stinky dirty. With all those cows and horses everywhere, you can imagine the stuff on the street. 
that ended on their feet. So anyway, someone had to wash away the dirt. But it was a dreadful job. Who on earth would ever dream of volunteering to do it? Only the lowest servant. And so here we have a picture. Can you see it? Of people walking in very dirty roads. Can you imagine all of that manure? Yuck! That you would step in? See, here are dirty feet. We got chickens and cow feet and people feet all on the dirty road. And then here we've got a picture of somebody holding their nose. I wonder if it's one of the disciples going, Ooh, your feet stink! I'm not the servant, Peter said. Nor am I, said Matthew. Quietly, Jesus got up from the table, took off his robe, picked up a basin of water, knelt down, and, to, and started to wash his friend's feet. You can't, Peter said. He didn't understand about Jesus being the servant king. If you don't let me wash away the dirt, Peter, Jesus said, you can't be close to me. Jesus knew that what people needed most was to be clean on the inside. All the dirt on their feet was nothing compared to the sin inside their hearts. Then wash me, Lord, G Peter said, tears filling in his eyes, all of me. One by one, Jesus washed everyone's feet. I am doing this because I love you, Jesus explained. Do this for one another. And so here we have a picture of Jesus, and he's taken off his cloak, his coat, and here are the disciples, and you can see dirty feet, stinky feet, and Jesus is getting so close to them and touching them with his hands and cleaning their feet because Jesus loves his disciples. Now, one of Jesus' friends had made a bad plan. No one else knew what the bad plan was. But Jesus knew. And so did Judas. Judas was going to help the leaders capture Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Go on, Judas, Jesus said. And Judas got up from the meal, left the room, walked out into the night. And here we have a picture. And Jesus and his disciples are upstairs in the upper room, and they're celebrating the Passover meal. And Jesus has washed their feet. And they're eating the meal, and you can see the donkey. And here is Judas, slowly walking out into the night to tell the Roman soldiers and the people of the temple where Jesus is. Then Jesus picked up some bread and broke it. He gave it to his friends. He picked up a cup of wine and thanked God for it. He poured it out and shared it. My body is like this bread. It will break, Jesus told them. This cup of wine is like my blood. It will pour out. 
but this is how God will rescue the whole world. My life will break and God's broken world will mend. My heart will tear apart and your hearts will heal. Just as the Passover lamb died, so now I will die instead of you. My blood will wash away all of your sins and you'll be clean on the inside, in your hearts. So whenever you eat and drink, remember, Jesus said, I've rescued you. Jesus knew it was nearly time for him to leave the world and to go back to God. I won't be with you long, he said. You are going to be very sad, but God's helper will come. And then you'll be filled up with a forever happiness that won't ever leave. So don't be afraid. You are my friends and I love you. Then they sang their favorite song and walked up to their favorite place, an olive garden. And so here's the picture of Jesus. And he's holding up a piece of bread here. You can see the bread in his hands. And he's holding, oh, well, he will hold up the cup. And so that's Jesus at the Last Supper. And so I want to go back to a couple of pages. And I want to, again, show you this picture. And see, you can see, let's get really close. Dirty, stinky feet on his disciple. And here his feet are getting clean with washing. And Jesus says, I'm doing this because I love you, Jesus explained. Do this for each other. Have you ever washed somebody else's feet? Well, I have. On Monday, Thursday, remember I told you this all happens on Thursday night of this week? Monday, Thursday, I would wash my friends here at Emmanuel Lutheran's feet and I would take off my robe and I would do it symbolically. I would just pour water over their feet and then I would take a towel and I would dry it. And that's something that happens in many churches all around the world is that they practice foot washing where they wash one another's feet. You know what? Maybe you could do that today while we're social isolating, where we're being distant from each other. Maybe you could get a bowl, ask your mom or dad to get you a bowl and fill it with some warm water. Make sure it's warm. You don't want cold water. And maybe you could ask your family to sit down at, a, at the table where there'd be uh, no carpet, where there might be some linoleum or some tile. And maybe you could say, because I love you, I want to wash your feet. And maybe you could pour water over your family's feet and take a nice dry towel and dry their towel, uh, dry their feet, I mean, with this towel. Because you love your family and you want to show your love, just like Jesus showed his love by washing his their their feet. And so that's one way of showing kindness to each other, is doing something that we don't want to do. We want somebody else to do. But then we take on that servant heart and say, no, let me do that for you. And then I want to show you this picture of Jesus with the bread and the wine. And we do that when we meet together here at Emmanuel Lutheran on Sundays. We do this, it's called Holy Communion where Jesus takes the bread and he breaks it and he says, this is my body given for you. And then he takes the cup and he gives thanks to God and he says, this is now my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. And so God blesses this food and then Jesus comes present to us in a way we don't understand, but it's a sacrament which means mystery. 
Jesus comes to us in a new way each time we eat this bread and we drink that wine. We have the promise that Jesus is with us and for us always. Now, another thing that uh, the author Sally Lloyd-Jones says in this book, uh, in this chapter, she, he says, she says, um, I won't be with you for long because we know that Jesus is going to die. You are going to be very sad, and we are. But God's helper will come, and then you'll be filled up with a forever help, help happiness that won't ever leave. So don't be afraid. Do you know who that helper is? That helper has already come and is with you right now. Do you know who that is? Can you guess? No, I know we always say it's Jesus, but this time it's not Jesus. Do you know who that is? It's the Holy Spirit. Yes, you have the Holy Spirit. And we as Lutherans believe that the Holy Spirit comes to us when we're baptized. And yes, when, we're, when we preach the word in church and when you hear the word now, the Holy Spirit is with us right now, giving you hope to say, you're not alone. God is with us and the Holy Spirit is also part of God, just like Jesus is God. And so we have God with us always, leading us and directing us. And so children of God, you are deeply loved. And Jesus shows us in the special way this week, by washing of feet, and by giving us his body and blood and bread and wine, that he loves you. And so Alyssa and Candace and Ginny and Terry and Carl and Betty, Jesus loves you so much. And Brandon and Alan and Carrie and Ray and Wilma, God says to you, you are my precious children. And Kristen and Leroy and Travis, God says to you, you are mine. And I want you so much. And Amy and Tyler and Travis. God says to you, I love you. So let's on the count of three, say, Jesus loves me. You ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Jesus loves me. And so children of God, in this holy week, you have a marvelous day today because Jesus loves you you. And so I'll see you tomorrow on Wednesday at 10 o'clock when we gather together again and I'll read another story to you of what happened to Jesus on Monday Thursday, the night that we remember this all happened to Jesus on Thursday night. So you have a great day. Jesus loves you and I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, children of God. Goodbye.